Okay, welcome to our second example on hydraulic lifts. Now this one should be a pretty simple and fun one. So in this example, we have a piston system, a hydraulic lift here on the left. And the question states, how far down must a three centimeter diameter piston be pushed to move a nine centimeter diameter piston up by a distance of 20 centimeters. So we have piston one here on the left, piston two here on the right. Piston one you can see is much smaller than piston two and both of these pistons are circular. So we have a three centimeter diameter piston and a nine centimeter diameter piston. So what we're asked to do is figure out how much this piston one needs to move down so that we can lift piston two up by a certain amount. And so what I did was I had this dashed line here to denote the original location of piston one and then the solid line to state that's where piston two or piston one has been pushed down. So this I'll just call D1. So this will be D1, uh, which is the distance piston one moved down. And then this distance right here is D2, which is the distance that piston two moved upwards, right? So this was the original location and then it moved up by a certain amount. Now, there are a couple things to note. This hydraulic system has an incompressible fluid. So all the fluid contained inside of this lift is incompressible, which means the mass density is constant. So that means that the energy within the system is going to be conserved. In other words, if we push piston one down by a certain amount, then the volume that got displaced, which is this volume right here, is going to equal the volume here on piston two, that piston two moved up. So if I were to call this space volume one and this space volume two, I could say that V1 is equal to V2, right? The two volumes of fluid are exactly the same. Now we can use this relationship to actually figure out how far down piston one actually went down. So if I were to call this distance right here D1 and this distance right here D2, then this distance right here D1 is the amount that piston mo one moved downwards. And again, we can use this relationship to figure out what D1 is. Now we already know what D2 is, right? It's given in the question 20 centimeters. So D2, and I'll just write that here, is 20 centimeters. And D1 is our unknown. This is what we're trying to find. So let's go back to this equation. This is an equation that relates two different volumes. And volume is simply area times distance. So volume one is really the area of piston one times the distance that piston one moved down, so D1. And that is equal to V2, which is the area of piston two times D2. Now we already know D2, but we don't know D1. The last two terms that we need to figure out are A1 and D, uh, A2. So for piston one, and I'll just write that here, piston one, D1 is our unknown, and our area is going to be, well, it's gonna be pi r squared. So pi times the radius. Now, the diameter of piston one is given in the equation, or in, in the question, it's three centimeters. So the radius is going to be three centimeters divided by two, right? Di diameter divided by two gives us radius, so three centimeters divided by two, that's the radius, and we need to square the radius. And then for piston two, we can do the same thing, and D2 was 20 centimeters, and A2 is going to be, again, pi r squared. This time, the diameter was nine centimeters, so we need to take that and divide it by two to get radius, and then square it to get area. Great, we have A1, we have A2 and we have D2. So we can use this relationship right here to figure out what our D1 value is. So again, A1 was pi times three centimeters divided by two squared times D1, which is our unknown, and that's equal to pi times nine centimeters divided by two squared times D2, and D2 was 
20 centimeters. So you can see that the pi's cancel out and if we just solve for d1 by plugging this into our calculator we get d1 is 180 centimeters or about 1.8 meters. So what that tells us is that we have to move piston one down by a distance of 180 centimeters in order to move piston two up by 20 centimeters. And that makes sense, right? Even though the distance two is much smaller than D1, you have to remember that the area two is much larger than area one. So this relationship holds up true and we get distance one is equal to 180 centimeters.